Welcome back to the channel everyone and if you're new welcome today I wanted to go over some BTUs it's mighty warm in the greenhouse we're sitting about 60 degrees or so and it's only about 20 degrees and it feels like it's about 9 degrees outside with the 30 mile an hour plus wind we've got I don't know if you can hear the wind ripping but the wind carried on from yesterday we were out here yesterday filming and collecting some data and kind of just checking out everything and throwing up our little poly tunnel on our other side of the greenhouse here so today I wanted to come out and talk to everyone about BTUs and relate BTUs to compost and compost heat so let's start with our greenhouse here excuse my hat here we've got square foot times 20 equals the BTU required to heat it to a normal 70 degree temp or basically what you would heat your house to that's what this is based off of so we've got 520 square feet times 20 equals 10,400 BTUs. So that is the BTU output we're requiring in order to heat the air coming into our greenhouse per hour. So we're using 10,400 BTU per hour to keep this greenhouse between 60 and 70 degrees. Now what is a BTU? A BTU is a British thermal unit and it is the measurement of heat required to heat one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. And that's based on water being at its highest density being about 39, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go over a few daily accruals on your farm, your farm animals and a human. So we as humans have enough BTU output per day to equal 600 BTU or to boil one kettle of water. Now a lot of people have chickens so chickens produce about a half of a cubic foot of methane per day equaling about half of what a human does about 300 BTU or about half of a kettle of water heat now cows and pigs produce eight to nine cubic feet of methane per day being about four to five thousand BTU meaning that off of the methane that those animals produce we could boil five to six kettles of water now I went over our formula and the requirements that we require to heat this greenhouse up and it may be a little more because these were based off a decently insulated room that's why we're doing everything we can to insulate and prevent any leaks and gaps in the greenhouse so we want to hold as much of this heat as we possibly can now let's talk about compost and BTU output from compost so a general rule of thumb is that that compost will produce about 1600 or so BTU per cubic yard per hour. So us being 12, 13, 14 cubic yards, we've got three to four tons of compost or wood chips cooking out there. And how that relates to BTUs is about 20,000 or a little over 20,000 BTUs per hour that our compost pile is producing. So the more you have to raise the room temperature, obviously the more BTUs you're going to use. So going from like negative five to a 60 degree temp is a 65 degree swing. And that requires a staggering 42,000 BTU output per hour to achieve that temperature. And that drives home the point of why we double layered this greenhouse and have been insulating everything, allowing our compost heater to work much more efficiently. You hear that wind ripping out there? That's like 50 mile an hour blowing through that tree. It is nuts outside, but we're well protected in here. The greenhouse is nice and solid. Both these layers keep it nice and warm in here. We've had a little solar activity this afternoon. We didn't have any solar activity this morning. So this afternoon we've gotten some good sunlight in here, but this morning we came out and the temps were about 50 degrees. So we're not too far off from when the sun's out to when the sun's not out. As long as we've got a minute amount of solar activity, we can run both of these systems flawlessly. And that brings me to the Jean Payne compost heating theory here. So Jean Payne himself was able to heat water from about 40 degrees Fahrenheit up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit creating about a hundred degree difference. So this is our formula to find how many BTUs we need to heat water to a certain degree. So your BTUs equal your gallon per minute times your temp entering minus the temp leaving and that all times 500.4. And obviously the lower the temp going in, the more BTUs we gotta use to create heat coming into the greenhouse. So just for example, if you're heating water 20 degrees from the temp you started, 20 degrees hotter, you're going to use about 10,000 BTUs per hour to do that. So let's double that. You've got to increase your water about 40 degrees or 50 degrees. So you're pushing 20 to 25,000 BTUs per hour just to achieve that job of heating the water. So I hope that kind of gave everybody an idea or a little definition to the compost and compost heating and how much BTUs your compost is going to produce per cubic yard or per ton. So let's jump down here. I want to check out the temps on our water.
we got about 70 a little over 70 coming out of the pipe and we had about 95 plus on the actual copper itself it's very hard to get a reading on that it was getting so hot with my hand when i was holding it as i turned it on i know it was hotter than 95 or 96 degrees coming out of there so going from about 50 in the tank to coming out at 95 100 degrees is almost 20,000 BTUs. I guarantee that's what that was putting out is closer to about 120 because it was starting to really burn my hand as I was holding on to it. So if anybody's got any questions, drop it in the comments below. I'd like to thank everybody for watching and taking some time to check this out and a big shout out to all my subscribers. You guys got great ideas and great feedback. So thank you to all of you. I'm gonna design my methane capture kit and run all of that up and bring that to everybody soon so you guys can check that 